Hello, my name is Alex with ATech Tech Tutorials, and today we're going to be looking at the differences between Jira Software Cloud and Jira Software Data Center. So if you've been considering or just questioning what's the difference pricing wise, feature wise, you're going to want to watch this entire video because I'm going to give you all the details. All right, and before we jump into it, make sure you are subscribed. If you haven't subscribed already, this really helps the algorithm and helps me, encourages me to make more videos like this. And make sure you drop a like in this video so that uh, YouTube does all the YouTube things that they do with all those likes. And if you have any questions about anything I'm going to be talking about today, please make sure you drop a comment in the comment sections below and I will address your question. So let's jump into looking at an article or a really here, some documentation that Atlassian has. They actually have already outlined some of the differences between Jira Cloud and Jira Server. There is a difference between Jira Server and Jira Data Center. Uh, and essentially in a nutshell, Jira Server is going away. Um, so they've basically have rebranded Jira server to Jira data center. And so we're going to be focusing on comparing cloud versus data center, because as of today, as of this recording, 2022, January, 2022, you can only either purchase Jira cloud or data center. So you won't be able to get the server anymore, but there are some subtle differences. I'm going to not highlight every single one of these, but there are a couple that I want to bring to your attention. So one of the first ones is configuring an outgoing SMTP mail server. So Atlassian Cloud comes with an internal one. It, you can configure it with respect to, you can connect it to your Azure 365 account, or you can connect it to your G Suite. But for the most part, the level of fine tuning that you can do on the cloud is very limited. When you are on the server or data center, you have a lot more control. There's a lot more tweaking that you can do. And that system over there, in my opinion, is a lot more powerful but it, there's also a lot of configuration. So you have to set up your own like mail servers internally. You have to do a bunch of configurations behind the scenes. So it's a lot more IT heavy, if you will, versus the uh, cloud version is just gonna be plug and play. You just provide some information, you do you log into your Azure account or whatever account you're using, and then you're ready to roll. Some other stuff here that I wanna highlight is the customizable email templates. So when you are talking about Jira software and Jira work management, you are not gonna be able to really customize those email templates. But on Jira service desk, you absolutely can customize what message goes out to your customers. And at this point, you're probably asking yourself, okay, so we're talking about emails and why is emails important? And really it, it comes down to notifications. So Jira has a lot of notifications built in. So you get notifications when you're watching an issue, when you create an issue, when an issue is updated in status, when somebody comments on an issue and, and they reference you. And so you're going to get a good amount of emails coming out of the system. So in the cloud, you're really, you're just going to have to accept the out of the box stuff except when you're talking about your service desk there, you can actually control the message that goes out to your clients. And this is primarily in my opinion, because you're externally facing, right? You, 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 Alaska is giving you the power to kind of control what that narrative looks like, but internally you're just using what everybody else in the Atlassian world is using versus on the, on the server side, that's not always the case, right? You, you have a lot more configuration. Um, one of the cool things here that I also want to talk about is external management in the cloud you kind of manage your users by inviting their email and they can basically be any email from anywhere in the world. And they're going to be able to access your instance of Jira wherever they're at in the world, as long as they have an internet connection. Now, given there are some cybersecurity fine tweaks that you can do in the cloud to kind of limit that, but on the server, at least with most of the work folks that I've interacted with, you usually have to be in that network or that internet to be able to access that Jira. So from that perspective, it's a lot more secure, but you're limited to who can interact with your system. And so one of the limitations here is, or one of the things you want to consider, right, is are your users external to your intranet or are they like VPN and able to access your instance from inside? So that's, that's probably one of the bigger considerations as to why I would go one way over the other. Let's see if there's anything else here. Oh, uh, installing custom maps is a really good, interesting one too, because in the cloud, I want to be careful with this because you can create custom plugins, if you will, for the cloud, but it's a lot, you have to go through a much more rigorous process versus on the data center, you can just use Java, I believe, and just create your own plugins built in that are just, they're not even in the marketplace. They're just something that's custom made and built for you and your team. And so that's probably one of the nicer features from the data center 
that you can go do that versus in the cloud you you basically have to go buy although you i mean you can create right but it has to go through that authentication process because it usually is a lot more uh, stringent this is something that i think a lot of teams take for granted so in the cloud your jira is ssl certified that means you're going through an https there's a little lock when you're on the data center you actually have to go and configure all that and again if you don't have a strong it team if you don't if you don't have all this in place already which most companies already do to a certain degree or, or they're using some third-party vendor or something but out of the box it's not going to be configured so you have to go and make all those configurations on the data center side versus in the cloud you just take that for granted. Issue view is really interesting here because issue views to me, let me just backtrack a little bit, but not, not specific to issue view, but just the overall look and feel of Jira. If you look at the data center version, it feels old. It feels very, very antiquated. And when you're looking at the cloud, you're getting all the latest and greatest, which I'm gonna talk about in a second here, but the cloud looks modern. It looks, it looks new, it looks fresh, it looks alive. And when you're looking at the data center, it's like looking almost at a rustic. <laughs> so that's, I think that's really interesting, right? Because the, just the layout, the way everything is kind of just presented to you is it just feels super old. So if you've been using Jira for as long as I have, you're gonna feel it right away because it's going to feel old versus the cloud it's it's going to be very fluid it's going to look very modern and and this is really interesting too because i think at last in just in 2020 made that step forward because prior to 2020 i actually felt that the server version was way better at least the way they organized everything and the cloud was just like backwards but in around mid 2020 at last in kind of like 180 that they updated their interface to look a lot more like the data center but it looked fresh and so unfortunately just that this freshness just hasn't made it to that data center so those are one of the probably the biggest difference if just from a ui from an eye perspective of when you're looking at the cloud and you're looking at data center you're gonna you're gonna feel like you're in the 1990s versus like in 2022. those are again some of the highlights that atlassian has and now i want to switch over to pricing so the pricing is very different let's take 500 users and compare what these are between data center and the cloud. So I'm gonna put 500 users here, and you're gonna see that if I bump this to annual, okay, and you're looking at premium, because for a full disclosure, premium and data center are probably the best closest comparisons. When you're on Jira Cloud Premium, you're going to have, I don't wanna say feature parity with data center, but they're gonna be the closest that you can compare versus standard is just not going, you're, you're gonna lose some things like plans and actually i'm not quite sure what the other things are but you're definitely losing plans versus when you're on the premium you get the plans built back in and now your data center and and jura cloud can be more comparable but as you can see for 500 users we are looking at forty eight thousand five hundred dollars one thing i want to highlight here is this does not include any of the sso capabilities or uh, user management with like Okta and something like that. So if you want to use that, you actually have to go and pay an additional uh, premium here. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah. So it requires an additional access subscription. I can go look at what that is, but I guarantee you it's going to be more than 48,500 versus if you're looking at the data center for the same 500 users, you're looking at $42,000 per year. So it is slightly cheaper because you're gonna get the same power and that SSO is gonna be built in through the SAML 2.0 and Open Connect support. So you're realistically looking at well over 50,000, if not into the 60,000 range for the cloud that is going to, to basically like level things out for you, right? So you're, you're actually making an additional investment to go to the cloud to have some of the newer functionalities and features of the cloud. And then the other thing, right, is in the cloud, you can pick any number of users, as I can show you here, right? You can have as little as 50 users. You can have as many as 20,000 users, but you can have also five users. In the data center, you are starting off with 500. And so the good thing is you can go way over 20,000. So again, it just depends how many users are in your organization. If you're under 20 and you don't have like a full IT department to manage all this, although if you're at 20,000 people, you're probably gonna have an IT department. But if you're under 20, and again, you don't have a dedicated team, cloud's probably gonna be an option, a good option for you. If, and, and this is kind of where I wanna end this video, if you have over 20,000 users, or you have a pretty structured, rigid IT infrastructure for your company, and I really wanna make this, highlight this thing here, if you have these number of users where you have over, 
over 20 and you have a pretty stringent cybersecurity requirement of like your data needs to be your data, then the data center is your best bet because there you can stand up your own server infrastructure out of your own data center that your company is hosting. There you can put your uh, Jira or your Confluence and you're going to own your data versus what's in the cloud. It's kind of at the mercy of Atlassian's ecosystem, right? You, you're depending on Atlassian to do upgrades to keep your data protected. But if there's ever any data breaches at the Atlassian level, your data is going to be compromised versus if you own it in the data center, you're going to be responsible for your own cybersecurity, but now the onus is on you to kind of protect your data. So I think that for me is, has been, at least when I'm talking to clients or customers of that are using Jira, that's one of the biggest differentiators between do I go to the cloud or do I go to the data center where it's how many users do I have from a pricing perspective? So I can kind of figure that out, but then how valuable is my data, right? How secure or secret or confidential do I want to keep my information? versus can I afford to put it on the internet and put it on a software as a service? So those are probably one of the biggest things to consider. And I want to close up this video with talking about Log4j. So one of the benefits of being in the cloud, specifically when we had this Log4j incident uh, right before the holidays of 2021, was that Atlassian, since they own the infrastructure, they were on the hook for ensuring and, and securing that infrastructure to make sure that they were free and clear of any log4j vulnerabilities and the onus again was on them to do it versus on the data center i had to go into clients data centers and apply some either do some upgrades to like bitbucket or upgrades to jira and i had to go do configurations internally to fully protect yourself because even though atlassian can push out a software upgrade for you to up, basically upgrade yourself you're still doing a lot of it yourself Versus in the cloud, for all my clients that were in the cloud, all I did was send them an email saying, I'm telling them here, Atlassian's taking care of it. You're good to go. You don't have to worry about it. So anyways, that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you so much again for tuning in. If you haven't already, please make sure you're subscribed. That really, really does help a lot. I'm trying to monetize this channel. I'm trying to grow to a thousand subscribers. And so if you feel like you benefited from this video in any way, shape or form, please consider subscribing. Please feel free to share it with your friends, your coworkers, your teammates, anybody that can benefit from having these Jira videos. Thank you very much. Really appreciate the support. If you have any questions about anything I covered, or if you just want to comment about anything, please feel free to use the comment section below. I will read them and I will see you in the next video.